Terraria, despite starting its life as a quaint little indie game in 2011, is actually in the top 10 best-selling games of all time. Almost. Just so close. Well, it's the 10th best-selling game in our hearts, at least. But of course, not everyone's a fan of everything. There's bound to be people who aren't a fan of the game, so I thought maybe reading the negative reviews would be a fun idea. Wait, 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 look, 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 here comes one now. Rolling Cactus. Well, I, don't, I don't get it. What's so bad about the ro- Oh. Jungle bears. They're not so bad, right? Jungle spiked slime. Boulder. Moss hornet. I hate the wall of flesh. 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 I hate the angler. Okay, well, he's not an enemy. He's just like a bit of an asshole. Turns out the game can be difficult for some people. The game really doesn't like to hold your hand. So you can find yourself dying repeatedly at all stages of the game when you're a new player. But when you become a veteran of the game and you've played for hundreds, if not thousands of hours, you'll often end up finding the game far too easy. In fact, there's a couple negative reviews that say just that. And they don't put it very politely either. This game is piss easy, even on expert mode. If you're not a child and have any game experience at all, you'll breeze through most of it. This is a terrible assessment of the game's difficulty, because any game experience at all doesn't necessarily help you if all of your experience is, say, in first-person shooters, does it? Being new to any game, no matter what that game is, makes your first playthrough harder than it would be for the experienced player. And a reviewer with a thousand hours in the game telling you it's too easy is irrelevant if you're truly looking for advice on whether you should buy the game or not. No shit they don't think it's hard. But this review is actually really, really long, and they go on to say a whole bunch of other stuff as well. The game is, by nature of its premise, a very look-it-up-yourself game. The game doesn't really hold your hand on stuff. There are not many ways in-game to know what you're meant to do next. But this is by design. The game wants you to figure things out for yourself, and realistically speaking, this is the exact same thing that other games in the sandbox genre also do. They make you discover things for yourself. That's part of the fun of this type of game. There are a handful of in-game ways to perhaps figure out what you should be doing next. Most notably is the guide. The guide can give you these vague clues about what you should do next, but he also lets you learn stuff about crafting. If you give the guide an item, let's say a block of wood, the guide will show you every single item that can be crafted using wood, and exactly how to craft them. So as useful as the wiki might be, it's very realistic that you would be able to beat the game without the use of the wiki at all. It might be harder, but it's certainly doable. The game is long, it's not a concise game. To me, this is a good thing. A game that costs $10 on Steam that can give you potentially hundreds of hours of playtime in your first run. That sounds like a win to me. And it's meaningful playtime too. None of that Valheim shit where everything's padded for runtime because it's in early access and they want their game to be long and it takes eight hours to even travel from one place to another, let alone actually craft items. <gasps> I mean actual meaningful and engaging progress the entire time for hundreds of hours. I guess if you're extremely busy, this could be a turn off, but in terms of value for money, this surely just makes Terraria a no-brainer to buy. This is a grindy game. Well, yeah, kind of. It's a sandbox RPG, so it will of course be grindy to a degree. There's no avoiding that really. But compared to some other games I could mention, Terraria's grind is really not that bad. There is a lot of grind, I'll give you that, but the grind is ever-changing and constantly uses the most engaging parts of the game's mechanics. Instead of just mining over and over and over again to get every single material in the game, Terraria's grind consists of mining, exploring for chests, fighting bosses, fighting enemies, and crafting items from unique drops. All of the most interesting facets of Terraria's core gameplay are all interweaved into the grind to make sure that it doesn't get too stale or repetitive. Like if you're not a fan of mining, there's a whole bunch of other things you could be doing at the same point in progression that don't require any mining at all. Another thing certainly worth mentioning is Terraria's huge modding scene. T-Mod Loader is free to download on Steam and it's very easy to use, which gets rid of that barrier to entry that a lot of other games mods have. And even just the quality of life stuff can remedy some of the more obnoxious things about the base game. Playing the vanilla game with just magical storage on its own is incredible. You can just drop all of your items into your storage and then search for them manually when you want to get them out, instead of having to sift through dozens of unorganized chests to find the one item you may or may not have remembered to keep. One thing that is worth noting is that Terraria is certainly better with friends. I've played the game on my own a bunch of times and I loved it, but playing it with friends is definitely an improvement to the experience. Stop checking bad reviews and play it lol. Awesome. That's really good. Good to know that these types of reviews are a universal experience that all good games review sections have to face, I guess. Plantera fisted me so hard. I, I actually can't read that on YouTube, can I? Because they'll
Terraria is mostly about combat. Of course there's plenty of exploring to get materials in the depths of the earth and all that, but in the end, chances are that the goal is to have that crafted into a weapon or item to help fight enemies. There are aspects like house building and decorating said houses, but this game feels a lot less about creating things than, say, Minecraft. He also then mentions that everyone compares the two games even though they're nothing alike. This is actually a very good point that I honestly never even considered, and it's 100% true. The game is very combat oriented. The creative side of the game game is certainly there, and there are people who make some crazy stuff in Terraria, but the game doesn't really incentivize it as much as Minecraft might. And perhaps that is because the game's two-dimensional, which limits your creativity to a degree. You're missing an entire dimension to build stuff in. The game definitely does pride itself much more on its boss fights and enemy variety than anything else, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The combat in Terraria is actually really good, and it's not like there isn't cool stuff you can do outside of that combat. In fact, a lot of Terraria's creativity comes from the wiring system. It's a little bit like Minecraft's redstone and it can be used to do a bunch of crazy stuff like making event farms and boss insta-kill traps and stuff like that. Like these traps created by Mappy, he created some sort of mechanism to instantly kill in one tick every single boss in the entire game. But Terraria also has lots of cool exploration. There's loot that can be found or mined that has absolutely nothing to do with killing enemies, and the random generation of the worlds makes it feel slightly different every single time you do it. There's also quests that can be done for the angler, although we try not to talk about those. There's even golf. It appears our first contestant, H2, is stepping up to the tee. Oh, he completely missed his first swing. That's an impressive feat. He seems to be getting an eye for the controls here, Jeff. Looks like he's never actually played golf in Terraria in his entire fucking life. Oh, look at that. Straight into the water. Clearly no idea what he's doing. H2's clearly not on form today. It's a wonder that he even got into this competition at all. Two hours later. It's been what feels like days, Jeff. Days. He finally got the ball onto the green. Oh, and he puts the ball barely two metres in front of him. Seems like he's going for a world record for the worst score in golfing history. And he finally gets the ball into the hole. I think that's the worst display of golf I've ever seen in my entire career. If I were him, I'd be ashamed of myself. I don't know how he can look his wife and children in the eye when he comes home from work every day. Bad game, not good. Thank you, man salad. I really appreciate your input. It really means a lot. After nine years of creating a sandbox game that you can play any way you want, the lead dev has decided there is now a correct way to play the game, and added mechanics to punish people for playing it wrong. This review is a little bit old by now, and it's referring to a now reworked mechanic called Torch Luck. You might think I'm gonna make fun of this review for being dumb or something, like I usually do, but no, this guy is 100% correct. Torch luck, in its original form, was incredibly stupid. In Terraria, there are torches. You use them to light up dark areas. But there are also biome torches. Torches that are slightly harder to craft or find, that aesthetically fit in with certain biomes. Like jungle torches, or desert torches, or crimson torches. Torch luck is a mechanic that gives you increased luck stats if you use the correct torch in the correct biome. Luck is a hidden stat that gives you better chances at getting item drops from enemies, or having NPCs spawn, and getting better loot from fishing and stuff like that. But when the mechanic was first introduced, using the wrong torch could actually reduce your luck stat by a very large amount, and you could actually have negative luck. This was incredibly stupid for a variety of different reasons. For a start, there's no mention anywhere in the entire game that torches have any influence on luck. In fact, luck itself is a hidden stat that's barely even mentioned in the game whatsoever, and just an aesthetic difference that bothered the dev for some reason was enough to lower your drop chances by almost 15%. After everyone lost their minds at this change, the devs did rework the mechanic. But even in its current state, the mechanic is still relatively stupid, because it's barely mentioned in the actual game whatsoever. But yeah, it just goes to show that an otherwise great game with an otherwise great dev can still make really, really dumb and unintuitive decisions sometimes. Okay, last one, last one. Yo, what the fuck? I thought this was scribbled off.